Welcome to Thriving Thoughts, a podcast for women who believe in thriving in any and every circumstance. Every week, we have candid conversations with remarkable women about how they silence the little lies in their minds and overcome their shoulds, coulds, and not enoughs with big truths. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. Now let's thrive. Hey sisters, welcome to episode 13 of Thriving Thoughts. So happy to have you with me here today. And listen, ladies, y'all are going to love this episode. I recently met my dear friend, our guest today, Erin Harrigan. Um, she is she is many things. First and foremost is she will proudly tell you she's a daughter of the Most High. And in this episode, in this conversation today, Erin helps us bridge faith and business. That's that's what she does. She is an entrepreneur who coaches women entrepreneurs and women in business on how to marry their faith to their success in business. So listen, if you are a person of faith or if you're a person who's exploring faith and how you can tie that into the work that you do, into the integrity of the work that you do, into the success that you want to experience, then this episode is for you. Listen, we go deeper than business too now. We talk about what goes on in our minds. You know, after all, this is about the little lies and big truths that we face every day. So you are going to love my dear friend, Aaron. And so I'm just going to be quiet now and let you listen up to my conversation. Thanks for joining, sisters. Hey, good morning, Erin. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Thriving Thoughts. I'm laughing because we just started like three minutes ago and I failed to hit record. So <laughs> thanks for being willing to do a, a short little redo with me. So, Absolutely. so happy to have you here today with us. I am so excited to be here. I am just happy to call you my new friend. I know we just met yeah. last week. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, God puts people together that are just yeah. meant to cross paths. And I truly feel like that's what he did. Cause you spoke some words over me last week and, yeah. uh, I've been passing that along. So clearly we were meant to be connected. Oh my goodness. You know? Okay. So listen, y'all, I get like ugly cry on these podcasts sometimes, which normally is fine because I don't have to do a video after, but I have to do my off the couch with Dr. Sherry live video that I do every Tuesday at 1230 on Facebook. So I'm like, I'm probably gonna have to redo my makeup, but I, <laughs> I was just talking. So I listeners, I was just telling Aaron that, um, I was a little late to logging on for us to record our podcast episode because I was listening to her Facebook video that she did um, on a topic that came up when we, when you and I, Erin, had a phone conversation when we first met. Yep. And um, just, I'll let you share about that briefly, but just the power of connection and and how God allows our gifts to be used in a very specific way that can um proclaim and share the same message. Mm -hmm. So um, I was sharing with you, Aaron, that God gave me a message a while back about the difference between apathy and surrender and how um, to, to the world, and I say the world, to, to the hustle of the world, to the, the typical, this is how business is done kind of thing to the world. If you don't look like you're you know, firing on all pistons, if you don't look like you're running ragged, if you don't look like you're hustling, people can think that it's apathy, right? That you just don't care. You're just not that invested, right? You must not want it bad enough. And for us as believers who are walking in obedience and saying, you know what, I'm just going to do as Emily P. Freeman would say, the next right thing. Um, I'm just going to do the next right thing. God, what is that today? That is total surrender mm -hmm. and it looks like apathy, but there is such peace behind it and it's not. So anyway, you took that message then and, and that's probably not new. I'm sure God has given that message to many other, other women, but, um, you took that message then and you did a video and you provided scriptural basis for it. And so I just, I love that. Like we connected, we shared our hearts. Both of us came together on this message, shared it in different ways. And that's what different women needed to hear. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And I, you know, I think that, um, it, I, I, I'm sure we'll get into this, but you know, my clear calling, although I dig my heels in sometimes <laughs> is, um, that is really helping women bridge 
faith and business, or like you said earlier, belief and business, yeah. and then equipping them to pursue success God's way. And I call that hustle with heart. Yes. And it's really about the alignment of our actions and our results mm -hmm. to God's truth. Yes. And born out of, you know, me spending a number of years building business outside of his will and what mm -hmm. we build outside of his will, we have to maintain outside of his will. And that is never a fun road to be on. That is hustle. Um, that is the that true is definition hustle. of hustle. That is at a hundred percent. And so yeah. when we talked about this apathy versus surrender last week, it stayed on my mind. And when I was planning for my weekly dose live, the Facebook live that I do, which then becomes my hustle with heart podcast, I thought people need to hear this because yeah. it, it's those little lies. Like you talked about, mm -hmm. that's exactly where the enemy wants us. He wants mm -hmm. us discontent and discouraged and doubtful. And those are the little lies yeah. that, that feed into this thinking of, well, I, I, I'm not working hard. So I'm, uh, the truth must be that I don't want it. Right. Um, and overlooking that it's the surrender that mm -hmm. unleashes God's supernatural work. Absolutely, Aaron. And so here's what I find interesting. You said that you believe that your clear calling is to bridge faith and business. Um, so what does that look like for you? Like, what do you, what do you do? Yeah. So for me, it has, it has been an unfolding journey since 2014 when my Arbonne health and wellness business started to go a little bit backwards. And now I can look back and see this was God really peeling away the layers and the strongholds that I had around that. Um, and so starting with me accepting Christ in 2014, mm -hmm. from that point forward, really praying over my business in a very different way. So there's kind of this saying of, you know, work like it's up to you and pray like it's up to God. Um, Hmm. And I believe that to a point, but I also was starting to feel that God wanted more of a role right. in my business. Well, you and, know, and that reminds me of the kind of cliche, God helps those who help themselves. Right. Which I, I think is a, as, that's a lie. Like yeah. God, God wants you, all he wants is you to trust him. Exactly. That's 100%. it. hundred yeah. percent. So for me, bridging faith and business look like saying, Lord, you gave me this business. You, yes. you created me, you know, every hair on my head and you gave me this vehicle. Yes. And, and so then asking, okay, why did you give me this vehicle? Did you give me this vehicle simply to pursue the success plan and get to the top? Or did you give me this vehicle for a bigger reason? Mm -hmm. And uncovering that through prayer, uncovering that for being in the Bible, because you guys, we don't read the Bible just to find the scripture of the day that serves us. The point is to get to know his character. The point is to see how he showed up in the saints of the Bible and to know that those promises apply to us too. Right. And so through getting to know him through scripture and really digging into what do these scriptures mean as a whole, but not just taking it out of context, which we right. tend to do because it's on a plaque. We like to cherry pick. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and then understanding that ultimately he wanted to be my main focus. Yeah. So instead of wrapping up my identity and my business and my success and an achievement, which is what I've done since I was a child, um, wrapping mm. up my identity in him and then, and then in surrender saying, okay, Lord, who do I serve today? Who do I mm -hmm. call today? What is, you know, some days it's no one. Right. Some days it's literally, I don't want you focused there today. That's right. Um, and what I teach and train through hustle with heart is that John 15, four is the foundational verse, abide in me and I in you. And then it goes on, you know, to talk about us being the branch connected to the vine, but that abiding means alignment. It means, it means yeah. in lockstep with, it means fully open to the nourishment and the equipping and the qualifying that yeah. comes from the vine. And so when we do that, that is when supernatural things happen. Like yes. your business grows, but you really didn't do much because you were focused <laughs> where God told you to be focused. Yes, girl. Yes. And he makes connections like the connection that you and mm -hmm. I had, yes. which then enabled the opportunity for you to speak that word over me. Yeah. Which then I was able to say, wait a minute, people need to hear this. So it, it, 
that to me is what it looks like to bridge faith and business. It, it looks like not getting caught up in what's not moving, not getting caught up in this isn't happening in my timing, not getting yeah. caught up in I haven't reached that level. So therefore, what message do I have to share with the world? It's knowing that we're here for an internal purpose. Yes. And ultimately, if if we come to him with a heart for him and we seek him and listen and obey, like he's going to provide everything we need. Mm-hmm. He tells us that. But it's it not might me. not be everything we we think we that, need. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> right. Like, and it's not easy. I was having no. that moment last week where I was after you and I had talked and I just I have been really ha- struggling with letting go of something that I've been white knuckling as a business. Mm. And I went and met with my pastor and she said, you know, at the risk of sounding simple like what's wrong with you? Like God right. has something so much bigger. Do you right. trust him enough? Yes. To not see that whole staircase. But to step off of what he's asked you to step off of. Yeah. And it just at that point became so ridiculous to me that I was holding on to this human thing. Yes. When he had something so much bigger. And I don't know what that bigger is. I've had glimpses, but I have the faith that it will be so much bigger. Well, and maybe not even bigger, Aaron, but better for you. Better for you, more fulfilling for you. You know, God promises to give us a life of abundance, not of mediocrity, right. not of satisfaction. Right. Abundance, like over and beyond what we can imagine. Right. Yeah. And so it's not to me, man, one of the lessons I've been learning lately. And I, whoo, I've been learning these over the years, but they used to be painful. They used to be like, why God, like, yeah. why are you taking this from me? And now when it's very clear that a door closes, you know, in business or in personal life, whatever it is, I get excited. I'm like, all right, then that's a no. Okay. Yeah. What's the yes to let's, you know, let's get to it now. And I have not always been in that place, nor no. do I claim that I will always be in that place, you know? But that's where I'm at right now. And that there is nothing more liberating than just being able to be in a free fall and just be like, okay, that's not it. All right, let's go to the next thing. Yeah. I had a moment, in fact, literally an hour and a half ago. Um, So I do some business consulting as well. Okay. This is its own gift. Like this is what God has given me to provide for my family while I'm pursuing being his messenger. He just amazes me. So uh, we're in the middle of a project with one of my colleagues and um, just sent the summary message of our next steps. And in comes a message that cross paths with it from the clients, my main client's boss, whom I've been working with. And she said, we're actually going to have this person handle it internally. So we don't need your help. But as soon as we have our 2020 list figured out, well, I'll get back to you and we'll map out what help we need. And in that moment, I was like, oh, right. <laughs> but then I thought, okay, God, clearly right. you have something else coming. Right. Clearly you have something so much better. So it is what it is. Like you never right. cease to provide. That's right. And I have and, a woman and- on my team who is, um, uh, she's not a follower of Christ. I mean, she she believes in higher power, but I called her immediately and said, stop work on that project. And she said, it's okay because something better must be. Yes. Coming. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And if we can really like latch onto that, we don't have to suffer. We don't have to suffer. You know how many times I hear women say, you know, I suffer from this or I suffer from that. Why? Why are, why are you choosing that? Right. And people, I think the lie is that people don't believe it's a choice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I think that we spend too much time defining ourselves by that. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, that, that gets in our way. And guess what? That's exactly where the enemy wants us. I mean, he, my, one of my mentors said, we're like tops, like toy mm-hmm. tops. So the, the enemy wants to get us spinning. Cause if he can get me spinning and then I'm spinning over here, he can come mess with you. Right. 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 And that's exactly <laughs> where he wants us. Right. We're all, I'm just picturing all of us like these like little <laughs> puppets, you know, and like, oh my gosh, when will we stop giving the power to the enemy and believing these lies right. and letting him spin us out? Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm positive that someone is listening to this and they're going, you know, Dr. Sherry, Aaron, like that seems so easy for you to say, like, oh, stop gosh. thinking that. And it's not, you guys, it's not. It's not, which is why this exists. Yeah. That's to help right. remind us of that, to help take us back to the foundation of all that personal development is God's word. Yes. You know, how many ways does he tell us to be strong and of good courage? How many ways does he tell us that our mind is the primary battlefield? Right. That's right. That's right. And I'm reading an interesting book uh, by Chris Balaton. Um, it's called Fashion Terrain. Amazing, amazing book. I highly recommend it. It's um about women and how women are um kind of historically, starting with Eve, the the uh, acute targets of the enemy with regard to our thought worlds, with regard to our minds, right? Like that's how he gets to us. He doesn't really get to men through their thought worlds. Mm -hmm. He gets to men through external things, yep. right? Like temptations and stuff like that. He gets to us through what we think about ourselves. Yes. You know, and so let me, let me ask you that. Um, I'm going to ask you to be vulnerable a little bit here. What are some of the lies that you've believed about yourself as a woman? Yep. that that you've struggled with that have kept coming back and will probably keep coming back in, in the future at various times. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the big lies is uh, the idea of being an imposter. Like mm. what if people find out that I really don't know oh, girl. everything that I know? You are or, right inside my mind. You're crawling around in right? there. Or, what if they find me out? Yeah. And when I started this journey, it was um, this journey of hustle with heart. It was uh, what place do you have to talk to people about? Yes. Who are you? God's way. You're not a million dollar earner. You're right. not at the top of your company. Right. In fact, oh, by the way, you were at a high level and you, you demoted. Yeah. So exactly. Who are you to be an authority on this? Um, those lies, lies like, you know, throughout my corporate career, I, I grew up in poverty, the oldest of four to a single mom. So we had very little yeah. and I really knew that the only way out of that was to get a degree and get a job and work hard and make a lot of money. Mm. And so therefore when I lost my job in 2012 in yeah. the midst of a fantastic producing year, well, who are you now? I mean, you lost right. your job. You're not, yeah. you're, you're not an executive. Um, who are you, who, how are you demonstrating to your daughters? I mean, what kind of mother are you? You're gone 70% of the time. You're not available. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. And then when I was home, well, what kind of mother are you? You're not even showing them a good work ethic. Mm. Um, so those are, those are probably the biggest yeah. lies, uh, that, that trip me up and they, and trust me, <laughs> they still trip yes. me up. The yeah. difference is I know that in that moment I can, and very often do get on my knees and pray, Lord, show me your ways. Right. right? Or um, just for me and not for everybody, but for me, just repeating the name of Jesus over and over again. Yeah. Because yeah. then that, that, that reminds me that I can take every thought captive. I'm in right. charge of that. That's right. So that's absolutely right. You know, the, the, who are you? Here's what I would say to that. This is the truth that I speak over that. And it's not a new truth. Um, but for all of us, all of us ladies, all of you women listening, the minute that you hear that question, who are you to do this? That is your permission. That's not even your permission. That is your command to go and do that thing. Yes. Because that means the enemy is trying to stop you from doing that thing. Because look, here's the truth. If we answer that question, if we said, who are you to do this? Well, you're, you're right. Who I, I don't have enough training. I don't have enough experience. I don't have the right contacts. I don't have the right words. I'm not, you know, we can go back to Moses. I'm not articulate. I don't know what to say, right? Yes. If we start to engage in that conversation with that lie, right? then guess what we're not doing? Exactly. We're not doing the thing that we had this compunction within ourselves to go do. Yep. And guess what? That's the distraction that the enemy wants. That's right. That's right. The distraction of being caught up in your own mind. And that only leads to 
you know, depression, anxiety. I, I mean, you name it. Sometimes I don't know about y'all, but, or you, Aaron, but I have asked myself, oh my goodness, am I crazy? Like I can get that deep in my head <laughs> where I'm like, I think I need to be committed. Like, you know, and, um, so we get it and you're, you're 100% right, Aaron. It is, um, it is not easy. And I think the other lie that people believe is that once you learn how to speak truth over a lie, it doesn't come back to you again. Oh girl, it comes back to you in just 8,000 more new ways. Well, and especially as we are pursuing, you know, as God centered entrepreneurs, or we feel that we've been called to whatever message it right. is, prepare for the onslaught of battle. That's right. Cause I mean, it's that is your battle cry. Right. And, and that should not be a surprise to us. Like Jesus told us we would be persecuted for him. Right. And I think that sometimes we think, well, if I just speak the truth over that lie, it won't come back. Yeah. If I just exchange that lie for a better thought that serves me, I will never have to have deal right. with that lie again, which isn't true because the more boldly you step out and do those things, yeah. the more the attack is coming but the more strength that you have yeah. to fight off that attack. Yeah. Well, and you know, and also, yeah, that's beautiful from a spiritual perspective and from a scientific perspective, which, you know, only serves to support the word of God. In my opinion, science was created to support the word of God <laughs> and it certainly does. It doesn't defy it by any means. Um, but from a scientific perspective, th our thoughts, the, the, the lies that come into our minds, they become habits and um, the brain does not forget habits. Mm -hmm. The brain doesn't forget them. However, we do get to create new habits. And so that's the thing. Like they will always be there. They will always resurface when we least expect it. We just get more facile in being able to speak truth to them. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. to watch out for those moments. As Dr. Charles yes. Stanley says, he uses an acronym HALT. When you're hungry or hangry, whatever you get, <laughs> when you're angry, when you're lonely, and yes. when you're tired. Ooh. So I have to step back having learned that and say, when I'm at my most doubtful, what's happening? Am I yeah. tired? Am I feeling alone? Am I just hungry? Like yeah. those are real physical attributes of life. Mm -hmm. And those are the moments where we are most vulnerable. And so if we can recognize that, then we can say, okay, wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm just tired. That is such a beautiful practical tip. Recognize what state you're in. Absolutely. Recognize your triggers. Yeah. Know it, expect it, and be prepared for it. Yes. Go so get dressed in that armor, girl. That's so, it. hey, I've got a question for you. So you have a group on Facebook called Success God's Way. Yes. Right? Okay. So here's, here's one of the things that I've noticed um, among women that um, there is a cry, there is a hunger, there is a thirst, not just to be, but to feel successful, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think we erringly commit the definition of success to the world's definition, right? And um, therefore, then we start to feel less than. We, we don't feel like we measure up. We're not enough because I'm not making an impact. Like I don't have, you know, I can't do the swipe up feature on Instagram because I don't have 10,000 followers, right? <laughs> like right. seriously, you know, like, wow, how can I be like, you know, Rachel Hollis or how can I be like Annie F. Downs or, you know, and man, we just get off track. That's another distraction, right? That definition of success. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And when I started the Success God's Way community and Facebook, my purpose was I, I started earlier this year when I was really launching Hustle with Heart. I started a, a habit to do a daily five minute Facebook live, which I do on my news feed and I, I call it the daily dose. Okay. Um, you do that on your personal news. Feed I do that on my personal news feed. And the okay. reason I do that there is because that is a message for everybody. Right. Yeah. Um, so I do the daily dose every single morning, Monday through Friday. Um, I utilize that in many. Is that alive? Days. It is alive. And what time do you do that? Because we want to put that in the show notes, too. Yeah. I, I mean, it's usually somewhere between like 7 and 10 a.m. I try okay. to do it um, around 730 in the morning. It doesn't always happen that way. Um, but I also have that on my YouTube channel, which is just under Aaron Harrigan. So if anybody wants to watch there. Um, 
but I could sense that there was a deeper need for connection. Like people really wanted to, at the end of each of those, I always say, please get down, get down below and comment and let me know how this resonates with you. 90% of the time people don't say anything yeah. there because it's very vulnerable because it's, it, it's right. public. So I created Success God's Way because I wanted to create a community where we could dig a little bit deeper and that people could feel comfortable sharing that, especially things like, you know, I'm really struggling because I feel like my business and my my leadership or my boss wants me to go this way, but God's calling me that way. And I don't have anybody that I can talk to about that. And hence why we have Success God's Way community. Right. And then in there on Mondays at 8 p.m., I do a weekly dose. So it's a little bit okay. longer. It's a little deeper into scripture on a specific topic. Um, but what I have found is that this is a community. It's a small community. You know, we're just a little bit over a hundred, which okay. again, you guys like don't measure your effectiveness based on like how many followers you have, because That's right. you never know how your message, I mean, I've had people share my message and then someone come back to me and say, you don't know me, but this person, this person, this person, here's how we're connected. Can I join your group? And I'm like, I didn't even know who you were, but somehow this message right. That's right. impacted you. Yeah. So creating well, and that I've been, I've been a part of a, a lot of different Facebook groups Yeah, and I know this sounds trite, but it is quality over quantity. Yeah. I've been, you know, I've been in groups that have 20,000 plus members and it's garbage, right? There's nothing useful in there. There's yeah. nothing good in there. There's nothing new in there. There's nothing for me personally in there. And, you know, maybe it started out as something. I mean, it, this is, this is the same thing why they started, you know, in building the church. Exactly. Right? You started right. making new churches because not everybody can be part of the same group, nor should they be. Because once it gets too big, right, it can lose its purpose. It can le lose its focus, right? Yeah. And is it really bringing value? That's and right. That's where I, I really have started to post things like a question of the day or whatever, because there are people in there. Not everybody's an entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. There are people in there working regular jobs that are just, they want to bring faith into the workplace and they don't know how, maybe they feel discouraged or maybe they want to celebrate how they did. And so that group is that, that's why it's there. Um, it's not there. It's not there to be the biggest group. You yeah. know, it's, it's just for people to have a place of respite where they can come and share and be prayed over. And um, if they want to comment, they can. I have a lot of people who just don't. And then I'll get a message from somebody, you know, because they're not commenting mm -hmm. in the group. But whatever I talked about resonated with them and maybe they're struggling with something. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I that that group has been and, and I'm very vulnerable in that group, too. When I post the question, right. I share myself what that's I'm right. Through. That's right. So. so, OK, so a couple of things. And then I want to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to be vulnerable here on the show with me and the listeners. Um, so, I, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about this, this question in my, in my mind about how do we um, get women to champion the power of vulnerability? And I think about like um, discretion as well. So you have the, there is power in vulnerability and there is power in discretion <laughs> about who, you, who you are with whom, you know, you are vulnerable. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think there's a lot of lip service paid to vulnerability and yes. authenticity these days. Yes. Uh, I think that there are a lot of very, um, well-known people that talk about this. And then when you start to pull back the curtain a little bit and you look at like really what their life looks like, you're kind of like, you know, kind of, I don't know what's happening behind closed doors, but it doesn't look like you have it so bad. Right. Um, I think that in our vulnerability, it's not about showing it for the sake of showing it. That's right. That's right. Yes. And so I think that that's where discretion comes in and says, yep. where you have to stop yourself and say, why am I sharing this? Yes. Like, for example, last week I got caught in um, a password nightmare doing my daughter's financial aid form. <laughs> so after the hour and a half that it took me to finish it, I posted on Facebook, like I survived the 2020. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I had people like, I had one mom who was like, wait a minute, I have to fill that out every year. And I'm like, right. Yeah, so that's valuable. Right. That now, right. you know, um, 
But am I going to get on there and share, you know, the deepest, darkest right. moments? No, I might share afterwards as part of my weekly dose or or something that, um, because I think it's really important also that people know that just as you have that lie that says, you know, how can you be an authority? Yeah. You also have to stand in the truth that your story and there's glory in your story and Amen. somebody else can benefit from that too. So I think it's writing a fine line of sharing yeah. your vulnerability and then being discerning on yes. where you use discretion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it might not be that you, you know, share that on Facebook. It might be that you share that in your uh, small, I don't know, Bible group study that you have with other women. It might be that you share that over a cup of coffee with a friend, right. you know, it, using that discretion and, and vulnerability to me is simply just being honest. Yeah. It's yeah. just being honest about what's going on with you, you know? Right. And um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your thoughts on that. I think that's important for women to hear that, especially what you said, that um, being vulnerable for the sake of being vulnerable actually um, defeats the purpose because yeah. it's not being authentic. Absolutely. And I just want to say one more thing, and that is if you're struggling, like you have a lot happening, I have some friends that share everything. everything. <laughs> and yes. These are genuine things. It's not like they're crying wolf. But when I see them in private, I'm like, friend, <laughs> right. you don't have to share everything. And I don't think they're sharing everything for the attention. I just think that they feel like Facebook and social media is their sounding board. Yeah. And if they put it out there, that somehow they're getting it off their chest. And I just want you to know, if you're one of those people, um, that we love you. And I would encourage you to just think about, like, what is the value to me and what is the value to others if I'm sharing this? And could I be sharing this just in my journal versus putting it all out there? Because yeah. the more you're putting it all out there, then you do, then, then I, it's not about caring what other people think, but it's about how are you showing up in life and having people kind of go, oh, she's telling the story again. Right, you know, right. I, I don't know. I, I just well, no. I think it's a great point. I here I see two. I two. I see two sides of that coin, Aaron. One is what is the you know. First, it operates on under the presumption that you believe that you are here to serve other people, right? And that everything that happens to you is not about you, but has the potential to be used to serve, right? right. To add value, like you're talking about. So. That's a question to ask yourself. That's a barometer for whether or not I should share this. Does this add value? Does it serve other people? Or is it just venting? Is mm -hmm. it Does it add value to others or does it add value to me? If right. it adds value to you, then I would say that's your signal. Now's not the time to right. share that, right? Yeah. Um, now, the the other side of that is for for those women who do have that tendency or need, you know, need that outlet and, and are just desperately craving for somebody. And it's not a bad thing to want attention. Y'all, we all want it. Yeah, um, all we right. all want it and we all crave it. We need it. We need to be attended to. We need to be known, seen and loved. Right. Um, so, but when you're doing that, how, when you are too transparent about everything that's going on in your life on a platform like Facebook or Instagram, for instance, how that can hurt you, mm -hmm. right? So the question is, does this add value to me or to somebody else? And then secondarily, will this hurt me or hurt me and my family or hurt me and my friends or hurt somebody else who you might be talking about, right? So I think right. if we can honestly answer those couple of questions, that helps us really determine, okay, should I be vulnerable in this or not? So yeah, great absolutely. feedback. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Asking you to be vulnerable. Share with us, um, just talking about bridging that um, or connecting, intertwining, weaving together faith into business. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had in doing this? Maybe not even challenges. That's not the right word. What are some of the biggest aha moments that you've had where you didn't even realize that Christ could be in the business? Wow. Well, when you were going down the challenges route, I was like, oh, I know exactly how to answer that. Right. Um, the biggest ahas. Uh, Wow, that's a really good one. I think one of the biggest ahas was that I'm not alone. 
and I don't have to do it by myself. And having grown up in an environment where my mom was super hard worker, we had a village that surrounded us, but there was a lot that fell on each of our individual shoulders and certainly me as the oldest. And so I have really bought into that. If it is to be, it's up to me and I have to go Mm. and go make it happen Yeah, and spent so much time doing that. And so then to, to have the faith and the trust to, to step back and let go of something and then see how he fills in something even better suited for me has been amazing. Mm. I think the aha of my husband and I have this conversation all the time. So, you know, you're watching a, 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 sports game and they score or they win and they're, and you know, the players are like, yeah, God. And my husband is like, God does not care who won the game. He just doesn't. And I said, but what if it's not about that? What if it's about Lord, you gave me the strength and you gave me the talent and you put me in this situation, you know, for a time such as this. Right. And so, um, seeing him show up in ways like in our finances. Yes. And and realizing and I was just reading about this this morning that like God is long suffering. You know, oh, his, girl. his power and his patience are interdependent. Woo! I love so, that. Say that again. His power His power and his and his patience are interdependent. So therefore, his eternal patience with the mess that we made in our life financially with the, mm. with the mess that we made or, you know, the, the mess of my ego in the middle of my business and just, just his patience, even though I feel like very often he's sort of like, come on, you know, <laughs> but he's not, he's not, no, he's not, you know, and, and that's been an aha, like to see him yeah. be to so, experience the long suffering and the mercy and, you know, yes. and, and like putting him in the center of my business as he was sort of peeling back the layers of my business and taking, as I liken to Gideon, right? Like he took me from X to like minus X um, and, and seeing like the 300 of my business. And yet he could have taken me back to zero and yeah. he didn't. Right. And so just like the grace that has the grace of how he shows up has been, I think, the hugest aha of all. Wow. So let me ask you this, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, how do you then duplicate that? What what practices do you have? How do you duplicate that grace that you've experienced for your clientele? Yeah. So I think it first has to start with, there's a big saying, and I don't know if it's in every industry, but it's certainly in network marketing, um, which is love people where they are. And what I realized was for a long time, I was paying that lip service. So what I mean by that, just transparently, what I mean by that is I would say, I have to love people where they are in their journey and their goals are not my goals. And they just, they want different things. But then behind the scenes, I'd be like, oh my gosh, judging, just get to work. They just don't want it bad enough. They're not willing to work hard. And so where he has shown me grace to then turn around and shine the light on the fact that I was paying that lip service and then to turn the corner with his help and say, no, I have to give grace to these people. I have to give grace to my clients when they don't do their coaching homework and they're not prepared for the next conversation. I have to give grace to my clients when they're not ready to, you know, reorder and continue their healthy living journey. I have to give grace to my client today when she said, we're not going to, you guys can stop work on that because I know her. She's a friend of mine and my client. So I could have said, seriously, (laughs) But I didn't. It was showing the right. grace to say, okay, so how do I turn this around? Um, so it has been a lesson. And I'm not, I'm still not always good at it because then there are people above and around me that I think, I can't believe they said that to me five years ago. <laughs> I have <laughs> yeah. to get over that right. and I have to show them grace for where they are in their journey. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's really beautiful. I think that, um, the level of patience that we are able to give, not just to others, but to ourselves, right? The, like going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, it doesn't mean you're lazy if you're in surrender, right? That's, that's 
offering grace to yourself. That's saying I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Right. And meeting others and loving them right where they are supposed to be. That is a direct reflection of how much we believe that God is patient. A hundred percent. Right. We will execute. We will exercise the level of patience with others and ourselves that we believe God offers to us. Yes. Yep. So if you think God is a God that's up there with a -a whack-a-mole hammer or, uh, you know, slapping you on the forehead, you should have had a V8 stupid, like what's wrong with you. (laughs) Right. 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 Then that's exactly how you're going to treat yourself. That's exactly how you're going to treat others. That's the lens you're going to look through. Whereas if you look and you see God has been so merciful, so grace, grace giving, so long suffering, y'all long, long <laughs> suffering. I mean, whew, thank God he loves us as redeemed and not as being redeemed because right. We, we, that's another topic for another day, but yeah. I think, um, You know, that if we believe that truth, if we believe in the character, going back to what you said, studying the character of God, if we believe that he is long suffering, if we really believed that, how could we not be long suffering with others, Mm -hmm. with ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I, I don't know. I really hope this speaks to somebody listening today, because if you, if you, if you don't, if you haven't experienced that truth, um, Aaron and I are going to pray for you. We don't, we don't even know who you are, girl, but God sees you. He knows right. you and he can speak that truth into your heart right now that he is long suffering. He's never turned his back on you and he never will. And he has nothing but grace for you for days and years and for all of eternity. And you have been granted permission to offer that to yourself. Yes. Too. Yeah. And I think going back to what you just said, Sherry, about that, you know, how we see that and believe that is how we treat others and ourselves. I think we tend to see God as human and with the characteristics of a human being. And so we put him in this box. And so therefore we expect that he's going to show up the way we would show up. And the truth is we have to learn to show up the way he would show up. Right. And so when, when we can start to see that, and let's face it, I mean, we'll, we'll never be perfect until we cross the threshold into heaven, but right. every day we can be a little bit better. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Every day we have the opportunity to be his hands and feet and voice. Yeah. And so that's, that's our heart's desire for this podcast today. Hey, Aaron, I've got a couple of questions for you. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do. Now, I know that you do some, I know you do some consulting with businesses, but you're also doing individual coaching with women entrepreneurs. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So okay. I have, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So I am the hustle with heart coach. That's the name God gave me. And I do a three or six month coaching program or longer with women, generally entrepreneurs, really helping them to align their business, their actions, their vision, their goals, and then ultimately their results to God's truth. So okay. it's it's coaching in the sense of um, it, it's never the same for every person. And the pe- people come from all walks of life that, and some of them are believers and followers of Christ and some of them are not, but they just right. kind of hit this wall where they're like, is this it? Because like, this is not what I thought success was going to feel like, or (laughs) I thought I was going to be further. What's, what's really holding me back here. And so I do that coaching one-on-one and then I also do some speaking. So this is like one of the things that I'm doing Mm -hmm. today Um, and speaking to different organizations um, on, on all kinds of topics, not just success God's way, but what goes along with that? Like how, how you're building your network of, and sort of your, I hate to use the word tribe. It drives me crazy because I feel like it's like, I know, because it's like a buzzword. But yeah. like how do you build that network of people around you who are who are lifting you up? But it's reciprocal, you know, who mm-hmm. who you're lifting up as well. And then I'm also writing a book. So my book is publishing in February and Ooh. I know. And the working title is um I'm actually behind on my deadline. But the working title <laughs> is um Pursuing Success God's Way, a practical guide to hustle with heart. And so that's in the middle of being writing. And so again, just one example of how God 
moves, you know, I set the goal that I wanted to have one coaching client per quarter this year for my, just for my first year. Mm -hmm. And so I have had a coaching client for a second and third quarter. Well, this quarter I didn't. And I was talking with my coach and I said, you know, I didn't reach these goals. And she was like, hold on a second. (laughs) Where does God have you focused right now? And I said, writing my book. And she said, do you think you could be coaching someone and writing your book? And I was like, probably not. And she said, well, so do you think it's kind of perfect that you adjusted that goal? Right. But these are the things we lose sight of because that's right. we're driving to the goal, right. you know? That's right. Yeah. So so let me ask you this. If you are looking for a an opportunity to coach a woman entrepreneur, who is she? Because she may be listening. So who is she? What does she look like? What has she got going on? What, what questions does she need answers to? And how sure. can she reach out to you? Absolutely. So um, a, a woman who is... In business, whether it's she's an entrepreneur or she's in an office, but she really is struggling with what does the next step look like and how do I do that with God at the center? Um, how do I really, it, it, especially if it's someone who's been in business for a little while, I think that's generally the mm-hmm. sweet spot is somebody who's been in business for a little while. They feel like they've sort of hit this wall and they're just not feeling fulfilled, but they can't put their finger on why. They've lost the joy and the spark Mm. of doing their business. And so the questions that they have are kind of like, is this it? Have I maxed out? Um, Why am I not where I thought I was going to be? I'm doing all the work, but I'm not seeing Mm. the results I thought I would have. Um, She's all hustling. I'm hustling, but like, I don't like how this And not I don't like how this feels because I don't want to take the action, but I don't like how this feels because it feels incongruent with what I feel like God's put on my heart. Um, Generally, I would say she's probably 35 to 55. Um, So she has some experience under her belt. Um, And she's really just trying to figure out how she can be more fulfilled. In, mm-hmm. in what she's doing. And that takes a reconfiguring of how we look at success and how we mm, that's it. Right. It yep. takes um, sort of a, a, a review of our goals and ensuring that like, did we set those goals? Cause we thought that was the right next thing to do or because that's what the success plan said to do. That's right. Or did we set those goals because that's really where God's put us. Yeah. It takes a lot of grace. Like we talked about because yeah. we, these women are not good at giving themselves grace. No, most not, of us are not. We are not. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I know that because I am that woman. That's right. Right. Speak it, girl. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of who they are. Um, they can absolutely find me at my website, AaronHarrigan.com. Okay. They can find me on um, Facebook as the Hustle with Heart Coach. Uh, they can find me on Instagram as Aaron Harrigan Entrepreneur. But um Definitely, I, I'm like my website and Facebook are probably where that's where okay. most of my audience is. Um, when I was trying to figure out, like, well, where do where do I spend my time when I choose to spend time on social media? It's Facebook. That's that's where yeah. they are. And they may be also. I'll just add this: they may be women who are sort of tired of seeing everybody's highlights and nobody's bloopers. Oh, girl! Yes, yes. You know what? I love. So this is so incredible. I just love how our message is aligned because I talk about this all the time that, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with vulnerability, but you don't have to have all of the answers. You don't have to be on this proverbial other side to share your story, to be an encouragement, to be of service, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say that all the time in my, in my hustle with heart. And my hustle with heart podcast, I say, listen, like what I am sharing with you, I have either just walked through or I'm walking through. Right. It. Like right. you just have to be two steps and sometimes one step ahead so that this is what I say so that my hindsight can be someone's foresight. Right. Influenced by God's insight, not yeah. our eyesight. And when I say eyesight, I don't just mean what we see, but I mean like eyesight with a capital I. Mm-hmm. Because what I've been through, the miracles that I found in my mess. I know somebody else has too. That's right. And if I can just impart to them a little bit, whether it's practical step or just uplifting them, 
that's just what God called me to. And I know I had a conversation with God a few months ago where I was just like, I don't understand, Lord, you know, I could do that and I could have that in my business and I can have this. And why am I not on that stage? And I felt the spirit say to me, that's not your stage. That's right. That is not your spotlight, girl. And I was like, aside. what? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we want that stage, but that's that. But well, we think we want it. We think we want it. We think yeah. we want it, but we really don't because it's not the place that's going to be fulfilling for us. We will not be able to fulfill our purpose there on that stage, yeah. right? Not everybody is meant to be a speaker. Not everybody is meant to be an author. Not everybody is meant to be a coach. Not everybody is meant to be a mom, right? Yeah. Not every, I'm, I know I'm speaking. Yeah. Not everybody is meant to be married. Not, we all think because society says, yes. these are the things that you do. This is what it looks like to be successful, right? But spending some time and asking God, what is it? Where is my stage? Identify it, put the spotlight on it and and open the doors and invite me on stage yes. so I can walk right into that, right? That's it. 100%. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so hey, give a shout out to your podcast. Tell us about it and where we can find you. Yep, absolutely. So it's the Hustle with Heart podcast. Um, and it's uh, the heart is like H dot E dot A dot R dot T dot. Got it. <laughs> um, it is on all major podcast channels. So whether that's Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, okay. Stitcher, et cetera, um, definitely go and check it out. I think we're up to episode 34, I think just nice. Brought. And Congrats, I'm just, I, I'm amazed. Like I'm watching these down. I'm going to, I'm going to go check it out and see where the people are that have down. Like you just said, like, did it go across yeah. the pond? Yeah. Um, right. And yeah, it truly is born out of that. I know not everybody's on Facebook, but I know people need this message. And so I started the podcast and I, it's nothing fancy. Like I got to look into what you do, Sherry, because like literally my podcast is me and my headphones and my laptop. <laughs> And some garage band, you know, but, um, but I love it because it has, as I, I go back and listen to it because the coach still needs coaching, right? That's right. Um, so yeah. And it's, again, it's not just for entrepreneurs. I talk about that a lot because I feel like that's where like you really fillet open the lessons that God wants you to learn. Right. Um, but I, uh, yeah, go check it out. I, it has been a labor of love and I love it. Awesome. And we are going to include that link for you in the show, in the show notes so that you can just hop on over after you listen to this episode yeah. and a little shout out, um, just for you guys right now listening. Will you please hit subscribe so you don't miss another amazing guest like Aaron is today and hit subscribe on the hustle with heart podcast as well. Help us to reach other women that need to hear our message. Thank so you. Aaron, uh, yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Um, what I'd like to do is we're closing out today. I, Man, you have dropped some serious truth on us today. Like I am just, whoo, I'm floored. I had no idea that was where the discussion was going to go. And we went to some really critical places that I know the women listening today needed to hear. So yeah, good. Um, thank you for doing that. Now, um, before we sign off, I ask every guest, if you could leave the women listening with one truth that you want them to remember and walk away from this episode, never forgetting, what would that truth be? That is good. Um, I am looking at my whiteboard and I'm not going to remember the song, uh, but it's an Elevation Church song. And the line from the song says, I've seen you move, you move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. So the Amen. truth is look back and see how he has moved and know that he is not done moving, that he will move again in whatever yes. dark spot you're in or whatever challenge you're facing, because um, he lives to, for us to see his glory in the mountains that he moves. Yes. 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 Love that. <laughs> Look back, see where he's done it and know, believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that he will do it again. Thank you for that truth, Aaron. Yes. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, is there anything else that you want to leave us with before we sign off? No, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. And um, I, I just hope it brings some value to people. That's that's what he's called me to do. That's all that matters. Well, you you brought some value to me. So mission accomplished. Back at you. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend, you go and have a blessed rest of your day. We'll talk again soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. 
As always, I'm humbled you chose to join me this week for Thriving Thoughts. It's women like you who listen, subscribe, and give us thoughtful reviews that allow our message of thriving in any and every circumstance to reach even more women who need a healthy dose of truth speaking. I'm Dr. Sherry, and I'm grateful to be your Thriving Thoughts host, where we're shifting perspectives and speaking life to you so you can thrive. Be sure to tune in next week and share this episode with a friend. Until then, remember, overcome your little lies with big truths.